Hey, I'm Matt. Today I want to talk to you about five more woodworking tools you didn't know you needed until now. If you missed volume one and volume two of this series, you go check them out. They'll be linked at the end of this video as well as in the description below. We'll start with the least expensive thing on the list, but one of the most handy things I have in the shop that I use all the time it's a sanding mouse. They're awesome. This is just a piece of foam with some Velcro on it for the most part. I think they're like $15, $16 for two of them. I'll drop a link in the description to all these tools if you're interested. It'll accept any five inch hook and loop disc. Doesn't matter if you're using Festool brand, Tiger Shark, 3M, doesn't matter. Once it's stuck, it's stuck and you can use it like normal and sand things. This is great for when there's tight spaces and you can't get your orbital sander on a piece and at the end of the project, when you've got your final sand done with your orbital sander, if you'll go over it and hand sand it in the direction of the grain, it'll eliminate a lot of those tiny little swirl marks you see in the finish on a lot of your projects. A lot of times on an orbital sander, when you put too much weight, it actually creates swirl marks that makes them real ugly. So this will help take those out. You can knock off the edges of stuff. I use it in the pockets of these trays that I make. This is a uh-oh uh on the CNC, but it gets into these pockets a lot easier than even if you're trying to hold a piece of sandpaper and get in there. It doesn't It doesn't have a hard backing to it, so it's, it's forgiving, especially on edges, things like that. I like that it wraps up on the sides as well. So I can actually sand the sides of the inside of these trays. Pro tip for you, when you store these, leave the sandpaper on it and your sawdust and things won't get clogged up in that Velcro or the hook and loop. And then the next time you need to use this, you just take the old piece off and put a new piece on. The number two tool I didn't know I needed until I got it was this oscillating tool or multi-tool, whatever you want to call it. This thing is awesome. I use this thing all the time. It's probably one of my most used cordless tools in the shop surpassing my drills and drivers because I use it that much. Of course, I use Rigid brand because I have Rigid tools. That's what I bought when I first started. It doesn't really matter what brand you're using. I'll drop a link in the description to a couple of different brands, but these are awesome. Let me show you what I use this for. You can use it for cutting out small parts and doing a whole lot of small tasks. So as you see, it's just a, a straight blade. It's got some teeth on there and it just vibrates. It's not moving up and down, it's only vibrating side to side and very little, just doing it really fast. This is hard maple, it'll cut through that. It's also variable speed. The higher the speed, the faster it's gonna cut. I keep it on low when I'm cutting out these MDF templates. The CNC leaves little tabs, if you can see it there, so that this piece doesn't fall out. So I just use that multi-tool to cut out those tabs. So mine came with this triangle piece that has sandpaper on it. They actually give you a few pieces of sandpaper. It's just hook and loop. I actually just cut that out of a old piece of sandpaper and stuck it on there. The way you swap these tools out is really simple. You just flip the lever forward and it takes the tension off of that front piece and then your tool comes off. In the sander, it just slides inside there so that it's not poking out. And then you just lock it down like normal, that piece is on there. These are great for getting into small spaces. Doesn't matter if you're making furniture, trays, boxes, anything like that. And the fact that it's variable speed means you can sand at different rates. What's really great about this is because of the shape that it is, you can really get up in those corners where you can't with other things. Even using this sanding block like before, you can't hardly get in that corner very well. You could sand the surfaces pretty well with this. Getting in that corner would require me to hold this and try to get in there. This makes it a lot easier. 30 seconds, I got that sanded to 120 grit, I can move on. You can use these in a variety of ways on the job site. A lot of people use these on drywall to be able to cut out around electrical outlets and light switches and things like that. One thing I really like about this tool is you can position this blade in any position you want or any angle you want to be able to get close to your project. So if you're not able to get it straight away, but you are able to get this in there sideways, then the blade will go sideways and let you get to those tight spaces. It'll cut a variety of materials. This is aluminum. Plastic, plywood. They make various shapes and sizes of these sanding attachments you can add to the tool to get into different size spaces, smaller, bigger. They also make different shapes and sizes of blades, obviously. They even make blades to, that gets grout out of towel. And I mean, there's tons and tons of uses for this tool. It's one of the most useful tools. It's a multi-use tool. That's why they call it a multi-tool. And I didn't realize how useful it was until I bought one. Number three, a portable workbench. 
This is the Works Portable Workbench. If you've seen my video review on these, you'll know how strong they are because it was able to hold 600 pounds. I packed it on there to see if it would fail and it didn't. Don't try it at home. Even though I have a plus sized workbench now, I still use these small workbenches all the time. They're, for one, they're very portable. Like when I was working on the deck, I was able to take one back there and just put my miter saw on top of it. Or I was able to have one back there to hold extra parts and pieces to work on while I was building the handrails on the deck. For folks who don't have a dedicated space to work, well, I know a lot of people take their tools out into the garage and spread them out to work or into the carport or even outside. Those are great for that because you can take them out, unfold them, use them as a work service, fold them up and store them easily. And for the price and the stability of them, they're very stable, they're very strong. They even have bench dog holes. If you have bench dogs you can work with. And they come with a couple of bench dogs. They actually come with four each that you can put in the top here to help for work stops, things like that. Especially if you're limited on space or you travel to different work sites, this is an excellent tool. And it's very affordable at only $100 a piece, give or take a few dollars. Catch them on sale a lot of times on their website. Another great feature is these are actually saw horses. You can use them just like a saw horse, or you can set up a portable work table if you needed a bigger work table than this provides. If you take two of them with you and you have a piece of plywood and a couple two befores, there's a tray or a slot that fits a perfect two before just like that. If you want to see my review of this workbench, I'll put a link in the description below for you. Hey, if you like these type videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button, click the bell icon next to it so you get notified of all the new content and then hit that thumbs up for me. Number four, parallel clamps. I did not understand or realize the, the exceptional price that a parallel clamp costs was worth that because it, it's a totally different style of clamp. It, it does totally different things than just add clamping pressure like an F clamp for years, years. The only thing I have was F style clamps. Even the nicer ones like this Jorgensen F clamp can't compare to what a true parallel clamp can do. Let me tell you. Parallel clamps are called parallel clamps because these two jaws are parallel and stay parallel to the clamping stock. A couple of things a parallel clamp adds that an F-style clamp does not. Number one, the clamping bar is much stiffer and it doesn't flex and bend. These Jorgensen's actually have a pretty thick bar, but even the same brand Bessie clamps, their bar on the F-style clamps is really thin. Then I got this F-style clamp at Harbor Freight. They're really thin as well. Problem is when you put a whole lot of pressure on an F-style clamp, when you clamp down on something, this bar will flex. You'll see it start bending like this. These don't do that. You also get much more clamping depth on a parallel clamp than you do on an F-style clamp. Another thing, an F-style clamp, when you're, especially if you're trying to glue up the face of something or you're, or you're clamping to the face of something, when you tighten that down, a lot of times this piece will leave an indention in the wood. So to get around that, of course, you just put a scrap piece on there, but the clamping pressure is not near as much as you can get with a parallel clamp. If you're gluing up cutting boards or charcuterie boards or table legs, anything like that, that you need extremely tight seams, you need there to be no gaps, then a parallel clamp's the way to go. They're also 90 degrees to the bar. The, the jaws are 90 degrees to the bar. So that helps when you start trying to glue things up to keep them flat as possible. So if this was a cutting board and we're putting those two pieces together, I got that clamped up. It's nearly flush and we're going to let that dry. We're pretending. But what's great is I can stand this up. I know this, this seems minor, but if you're able to stand this section up and set it out of the way while it dries, I've done this tons of times now since I've had these parallel clamps, it's out of the way where the F-style clamps, you can't, they don't stand on themselves. You can prop them up on something, obviously. It's not that giant of a deal. This is just a convenience. Another thing I've noticed with F-style clamps versus a parallel clamp on furniture building, I've noticed that these don't pull my furniture out of square or even like my router table build when I was gluing it up using these uh, parallel clamps to hold everything in place. Because this bar will flex, it'll actually start pulling things out of square when you're trying to glue it up or screw it or attach it, however you're putting it together. Whereas a parallel clamp just doesn't do that. Everything stays nice and parallel when you're trying to clamp everything down. These two jaws stay parallel to each other. I like these Bessies. I have had no issues with them. It's kind of one of those buy nice, buy twice things or buy once, cry once kind of deals. Keep an eye out around Black Friday. A lot of times these bigger companies will have Black Friday sales on their clamps through various outlets. As far as sizes go, I've got six of those 24 inch and four of the 50 inch. I like having both sizes available. I use the 24 inches more than anything. If I had to pick a medium, I'd probably go and try to get a 30, 31 inch, I think is what they come in. If you're making cutting boards, 
security board, stuff like that. The 24s will probably do you just fine. This video is brought to you by 731bullbarks.com. Be sure and check out our online store. We have easy to follow build plans to help you make awesome projects. Last but certainly not least, a dust separator. If you've watched this channel any time at all, you know that I've been vehemently against getting dust collection, not because I didn't need it, but because I didn't want to spend the money on it. It just felt like one of those, like buying a refrigerator or buying a washer and dryer. It's not something you just wake up and dream about. It's one of those things you, you know you got to have it, but you really don't want to spend the money on it. This is a Rockler Dust Right separator. I picked this one because it's not a five gallon bucket and it's not huge, it's not oversized. I don't even know how much this holds, probably 10 or 15 gallons or so. There's a fill line right here. I've been using it for about a week and I can tell you it has saved my dust vac and I don't have to constantly undo the dust vac and try to beat the filter out to make it suck again because it quit sucking because it was stopped up. And that's one of the main issues I was having. It was generating a lot of dust and I'm trying to keep it as clean as possible in here. For one, I got an air conditioner and I don't want to stop it up. But for two, I just don't want to breathe all that stuff in. And I want to try to get as safe as possible. And I was tired of messing with the shop vac stopping up constantly. Oof. If you see this picture here, you see how uh, neglectful I can be of the shop backs and they can get kind of full and stopped up. And I'm like, why this thing? So oh, I forgot to clean it out again. So I've been using this for near about a week and I've cut a lot of MDF with it on the CNC. I've also used it on the table saw. Let me show you what's inside. The good thing is it comes with all the hoses and fittings you need to hook it up to a shop vac and then to whatever tool you're going to use it on. The top twists on so that it stays locked. That's MDF dust for the most part. That usually is what stops up my shop vac. And also, that sums come from the table saw. I even sucked up a rag when I was vacuuming the floor earlier. So I haven't even looked in this shop vac, so you're probably gonna be as surprised as I am on whatever the findings are. I'm assuming that the filter is gonna be fairly clean. Now, it's not a clean filter. I've been using it and knocking the dust out of it for a month or so now. But it's not bad. And that is about a week's worth, maybe four or five days worth of vacuuming. It's all in here. There's nothing in the shop vac. I'm actually quite surprised at that. I actually thought there would be some in there, at least some. Comes with the wheels, it's very convenient, it rolls around. Uh, they even have an attachment that you can put on your shop vac to hug your little dust extractor so it rolls all together. I'm really, really surprised at how clean the shop vac was. And why does that matter? That matters because the suction that you get from the shop vac, you know, when you put that new filter on there and it sticks to the floor, it's that sucky, then it still, it remains that suckiness. A shop vac and your dust collection is really the only thing in the shop you want to suck. Everything else needs to be good tools. These suck in a good way. And one thing that probably should have been obvious to me before I got the dust separator that I've noticed is the dust collection on my tools have improved quite significantly. Even the table saw, it, you know, it still throws some saw up above the blade, but the actual dust collection coming out using only a two and a half inch hose in the four inch dust port is still sucking in much more dust. And on the oscillating spindle sander, if you saw that review, you could tell that the dust collection was just kind of mediocre. This actually improved that quite a bit. And then of course on my CNC, it's, it's, a, it's a night and day difference on how much it's actually sucking up. At about $100, 120 I think it was, just another tool I wish I had bought a long time ago. Click that box right there for volume one of five tools every woodworker needs. And for another volume two, click that box. If you click either one of those boxes, you get a big old virtual fist bump. Thank you so much for watching.